three pounds. Okay? Because it can get around, right? It can get around, cover a lot of squares around it. Okay? Um, the bishop. Now, it's got a problem. It's pretty good. Let's say there was a pawn going down here to promote. Okay? Let's say these kings are on the board, just so you know which side of the board we're talking. So, let's say this pawn's going down to promote. Well, this bishop's way over here on the other side of the board. It can still stop that pawn from promoting, right? Because it can just go over and take it as soon as it gets promoted. Well, what if you put a knight on this? Knight's no good at stopping that pawn. No <laughs> way, not a chance. Not even, I don't, I'm not even sure if it was here. Ah, see? Oh. You, uh, see, it would, it's too late, even, even if it, the pawn's way back here. Okay, so you can see why a bishop, it has long range powers, but how is a bishop different than a knight except how it moves? A knight, there's not a single square on the board that the knight can't get to eventually. Okay, how about a bishop? Can only this move? dark square, yeah, right? It can only move on the squares it started on. Right, yeah, because it can only move on these. It never visit. This bishop can never visit these squares. But if they Off limits. Bishop, that way. Well, obviously, then, and then the dark square can never go here, here, here. So that's why the bishop and knight are a little bit even. They say that, though, if you have both of your bishops, okay, against your opponent's bishop and knight, or two knights, you have a slight advantage. Okay? If you have both bishops, you know, learn how to use them. Okay? But they're, for you guys, they're just about the same. If you wanted to trade a bishop for a knight, or a knight for a bishop, that would be a good trade. Now let's look at a rook. A rook's next. Now, okay. It can move. It can only move forwards or backwards. It cannot, it cannot move diagonally. No, but it can't move diagonally, but it can move sideways. Or forwards and backward, okay? And it's worth about five points. Well, why is it worth more than a bishop? Because it can move forward. Okay, first. well, yeah, it can, it can, there are squares that the bishop can't go to. Well, okay, the knight can go to all the squares. So remember how we talked about the pawn facing down? Well, it's this pawn's going down for a queen. Yeah, all he's got to do is go there, go here. There's not a single square on the board that the rook can't get to in two moves. I dare somebody to point me a square that the rook can't get to in two moves. Okay? So that's why the rook is really powerful compared to a knight or a bishop. Okay. The queen, well, what's the queen like? She's the most powerful character on the board. Yeah. She's worth about nine or ten points, depending on what book you read. Okay. So she can be. She works like a rook and a bishop combined, and you never know what she's going to do, which one she's going to be on any particular move. Whether she's going to move like a queen or she's going to move like a rook. That's why it's so tough. Some would say that she's worth 10 for about a rook, a bishop, and a pawn. So if you were to trade your queen, if you were to give up your queen, you better at least get a rook, a bishop, and a pawn for her. Or you're going to have trouble down the line. Okay? You're, going to, you're going to run out of points here. Okay, so let's talk about how do we make these pieces what they're worth. So let's talk about, well, obviously a pawn. A pawn that's got another pawn in front of it. It's, you know, these two are still worth about one. Okay, they only control squares on the other side. Okay, this one, this guy controls this one and this one. And this guy controls this one and this one. But what if? Say you've got these three guys like this, but there's just one over here. Ooh. Now all of a sudden, this guy has got nobody to stop. Him, okay, no other pawns anyway. So this pawn is worth a lot more than these guys right now. Okay, because he's he's going to take all the attention away from <laughs> the other pieces, the black pieces over here, trying to stop this, trying to stop this pawn. Because if this ever becomes a queen. That throws a whole balance of power <laughs> off, okay? All of a sudden, you've got a Two lot points. of power now, okay? And probably will win the game. 
So if you're if you're playing a game and you lose a pawn, you can't just go, oh well, that's a pawn, no big deal, because all of a sudden now your opponent has more pawns than you, and if they trade off a bishop and knight and rooks and queen. Can't just say, well, it's just a pawn, all right? So now let's look at let's look at a knight. Okay, so we know how a knight moves, right? L shape. So the knight moves all these squares. Okay, you move to any one of those squares. Okay, so now let's look at let's look at the very beginning when it's on its home square. Okay, let's just say there are no other pieces of pawns, but even though just on its home square, it could move out to three, it could go to three spots. Okay? So let's say you move it once to its natural square. Now all of a sudden, what do you have? Just by moving it once, all of a sudden, you've got, it's got its full power. Okay, it can go to a lot of different squares now. Okay? And if you move it to closer to the center of the board, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you're attacking four squares on your opponent's side of the board. Side of the board. Okay? So the farther advanced this knight is to the center, the more squares you're attacking on the side of the board. Okay, so let's find some squares that aren't so good. How about this one? Oh, look at this. Four squares. Four squares? That's miserable. Okay, if you're ever going to move a, a knight out here, you should have a pretty good reason. Now, you could be attacking the king over here or something, and that's okay. But you just wouldn't want to move this out here unless you had a very good reason or if it's coming back over pretty soon. Okay? Because you don't want to limit on the knight. The worst square on the knight? On the edge. On the edge. Yeah, two measly little squares. That's all they can do. Okay, you don't want to put a knight in your corner unless you have a really good reason. Okay? Unless you have a really good reason. If you have to move it over there to save your king from being checkmated, move it there. But otherwise, don't move it there as part of your plan because that's going to be a bad thing. Okay, so bishops. Let's look at bishops. Now, I'm going to set up a little thing here just so I can get to see. Now, is it black? look at this bishop. Oh, it's black. Look at this bishop. It's got, he can't go anywhere. He's behind his own guys. He can never see the line of day. Okay? But let's say this has, has a knight here. And this knight can go here and here and attack this bishop. This knight is better than this bishop and this knight's position. Okay? So in a blocked up position, you don't want, if you only have one bishop left, you don't want to put your pawns on the same color as your bishop because all of a sudden he's got nothing to do. He's a spectator. He might as well go get cokes for snacks. You know, because he's got he's got nothing to do. He's got no fun in his life. Okay, so you want to have open lines for your bishops. Okay? You want to if you if you start off the game and you've got your bishop behind here. And you move this pawn here, and maybe you move this pawn here. Well, look at that. How's the going to get out? Okay, so what you can do is this like this. Okay, so you want to get that guy out as fast as you can. If you play here, then you've got some options. You can play here, or you can go here, or here. But you don't want to play something like this, where all of a sudden the bishop has nothing to do. Okay, so you want to make sure you first play the opening move so your bishops have a way off. And don't forget about your partner over here. Because he's going to have fun too. Okay? So the bishops have to have open lines. Okay? Who else has to have open lines? This. Rook. Let's say this rook is back here. And all these pawns were here. And he's got no... So at the beginning of the game, you know, the rook's got nothing to do. Okay? He's behind all kinds of pawns and pieces and everything. You've got to get these pieces out someplace. Rook can come and play. Okay, so you got to get the rook in play. 
Fonts aren't going to win the game by themselves. I saw you two playing over here, and you had four pawns apiece, I think. But all your pieces were so distracting. Oh my gosh. If you were, if you had a, if you were a football coach and you put all your best players on the bench, your, your, the fans would be throwing bottles <laughs> at you. And so you, you know, and so you got to get the guys off the bench. Okay? So you got to get these pieces out. You move a few pawns so you can get some pieces out. And then, so let me show you in just a brief little example game. I'm very good. We'll just look at part of the game. I just want to show you how both players try to get their pieces so they can play. Don't become so pawn oriented. You, you want to just move your pawn because you don't know what the pieces can be. Right? Okay, so this is, you know, white always gets the first move, right? White has an advantage because of that. Because now he, he's got to go here, now black can't do maybe exactly what he wants to do. Okay, so he's got to take care of white problems first. Okay, so let's say here, here, here. Okay. Well, let me let me do something else. Let me try something else. If I were to give you the first six moves, let's say they change the rules of chess just for you and gave you the first six moves. You can make the first six moves without your opponent doing anything. We're not going to play. Just gonna make you move six moves in a row at the beginning. But you can't move any piece or pawn past the center line. What six moves would you make? And then we'll talk about them when we're done. Okay. You gotta, you gotta move your arms. There's no arms in chess. Try try just play six moves. Just as they, as you think of them. You don't have to study too hard. Just what do you think you would do? That's one. So the, don't help her. Don't help. Yeah, the middle line. This middle line. Remember half of it. You can't move half of it. That's okay. That's okay. Two. That's okay. That's okay. Let me show you. And then we'll talk about it. Three. Two more. Two more. Then we'll talk about it. Five. One more. One more move. Yeah. Okay. So she played six moves. Okay. Let's look at the. Let's look at the moves. Um, now you tried to move this bishop, right? That was good, but then you immediately, she immediately blocked it, right? Okay. And look at how many pieces are still sitting on, on their home square. Wait, no options. I'm going to show. I'm going to show what I think are probably the best six moves, the first six moves. Okay. Well, and we'll compare them to your side. Okay. One. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. I'm just playing six moves. Just, they change the rules of chess just for me. Now, I assume everyone knows how to castle. If they don't, we'll talk about it. Okay? So, look at this. You see the difference between her position and mine? So, I have both of the knights out. My king is safe behind three pawns. I'm one move away from being able to put my rook in the center. Help out. Okay, it's no longer stuck over here in the corner like we talked about. It's over you know, if one of these pawns, if an open line, if something opens up here, then all of a sudden this rook is playing. And look at this bishop now. This bishop has a long diagonal, okay? This bishop is attacking the Lucas square on the other side of the board, okay? Because only the king. 
king to fix this tree. Okay? And the knights are helping control all of these central squares. Okay? And so are these pawns. Okay? So I've developed this much stuff in just six moves. And I've got all these guys. I've got some space to move my pieces around because these pawns are here instead of like here. If you move here, let's say you move there with these two. And you move the knights here, and you move here, here. Look at these bishops are hardly better right here than they are right here. These here, now all of a sudden, look. Ways to go. The knights, remember what I told you about the knights? When you move them once, all of a sudden they've got all their, they got all their capabilities. And then one move away from jumping into the center. Okay? You move out, and you try to castle as soon as you can. Okay? If you can try to castle as soon as you can, well, what does that mean? That means you've got to move this knight, and you've got to move this bishop somehow, okay? Pretty quick in order to castle. If you want to castle on this side, you've got to move your bishop, your knight, and your queen somewhere. So if you want to castle quickly, if you want to castle on the king side, which is what this is called, so the king. But anyway, this way you're not so, you're not just thinking about moving your pawns all the time. You have to get the big guys out. These are the ones that are worth more. Why aren't they worth more? Because they can do more. They can do more. They can cause more damage. More headaches for your opponent. Okay. So if you remember what the pieces are worth, okay, pieces are worth one. These are about three. Once you have both of the bishops, okay. but any number about three. Five. This is five. That's nine and or this ten. Is nine or ten. ten. What's the king worth? The king. Well, the king's worth everything pretty much. Yeah. But if you got into an end game. Does everybody know what an end game is? It's when they're, a lot of the pieces are gone, and you just have a few pawns left, maybe one or two other pieces, and the kings. And the kings are fighting kings. Okay? If they can stay out of check, they can run over and take pawns, no problem. Okay? And they can come out, and they're in the end game, they could be worth almost the same as a bishop or queen. So an active one. You don't want if you're just sitting in the corner all day. What's going to do anything? With exactly what it's doing to do it. It's out there fighting, and it's just like any other piece. One of these ones. So, when you trade, just be careful that you don't, you know, there are a lot of people that'll try to, you'll play guys, I'm sure, that'll try to develop your rook like this. Let's say, let's say you play your six moves, okay, and they'll play this and try to bring their rook. Okay, they'll do that. They'll try to bring their rook out this way, and then you can win a rook with your bishop. So you have to be careful because rooks generally aren't that good at the beginning of the game. Bishops are a little better. They have to do a little, do a little bit more. But in the long run, the fact that you took this rook with the bishop is going to mean something. So now you want to make the game favorable for your rooks. Because it's in lines. It's in boxes. And they're here. Here. But that's how some people do that. Okay. You don't you can't believe the number of rooks I've had right here. Okay, you can't believe in my long career the number of rooks I've taken by people trying to develop their rooks. And they just sort of look. Because they don't know what the pieces are worth, or they don't see it, and they don't think the bishops have power. Just because the bishop hasn't moved yet doesn't mean it's not powerful. It's good. Because it's got this long open moving this. It's starting to cause problems if you have any movement. Of course, you're going to have to move them eventually to the castle. But, so that's what you try to do. Practice castling as soon as you can. Don't ignore what your opponent's doing, though. Okay? Because I've seen people, I've told people to castle as soon as you can, and they completely forget about what their opponent's doing. Just trying to castle it. Meanwhile, they've lost about three pieces of because they're so busy castling and their opponent keeps taking them. Well, you have, you've got to be careful. You got to you castle as soon as you can, which means as soon as it's best for you. Okay, and that's what you should do. You see, get your guys out. Remember what they're worth. Okay, and then if you're here the next couple of weeks, I'll show you how to attack and what to attack. 
to work out checkmates, have some idea of how to win the game. How do you win the game? Win by checkmate. Right? So sometimes you checkmate with a lot of pieces on the board, sometimes there's very few. You end up queening a pawn. And all of a sudden you have a queen and your opponent doesn't. Right? But then you still have to check. At least this gives you some idea about what you should be thinking about at the beginning of the game. Okay? Not one of these things. Okay? I've seen these kinds of openings. I've seen, you know, all kinds of where they just alternate pawns, this kind of stuff. I've actually had pretty good success. You got <laughs> You're not helping me. You gotta you gotta get your guys out. Okay, you gotta get these guys. These are the money makers here. Okay, these are the ones that are these are the ones that are gonna do the thing for you, okay? These, the pawns just kind of protect you, but also attack squares. If you move the pawns, they allow the pieces to come out, and they give you space. They give you space to move, okay? So that's what you want to do, okay? So practice that. Go ahead and practice that in your games, okay? And see if you can, and right away, you'll, all of a sudden, you'll see, oh, I've got pieces to play with. Mm -hmm. This is much more fun than just trying to bounce you know, heads with pawns. Okay. All right.